so let me press the record button I pressed the record button so we are recording. I already recorded like around 13 Haskell Run episodes and a bunch of other Haskell related videos, but I never actually explained how my Haskell setup works. You may probably see that I use Emacs and some extensions for Emacs, but I never explained what they are and how to configure them. And people were asking me to do that for quite some time already, so I decided to finally uh, go ahead and record a video about that. I think I can uh, divide my uh, Haskell setup in two different categories. The setup for Haskell rank episodes and uh, setup for real world applications. <laughs> Haskell real world application, am I right? Haskell rank setup is usually much simpler because it doesn't really require too much because, uh, you know, Haskell rank solutions are very small, but the setup for real world applications is usually a little bit bigger and it includes a couple of extra tools. Just a disclaimer, everything I'm going to talk about today is related only to Linux. And as a matter of fact, I've never programmed in Haskell in any other operating system. I have no idea how people program in Haskell on Windows or Mac OS. So if you want to know more about that, just use Google, I suppose. I only know Linux. First tool I usually use is Emacs. Nobody uses it these days. Everybody uses Sublime, Visual Studio Code. What did you expect from a Russian 13 years old boomer? If you're on Linux, you can install Emacs from your official repository or something like that. I don't want to go into that. I also ma made a video about how I personally configure my Emacs. Uh, you can watch it in, in this YouTube card that I'm going to put up. But when you install your Emacs, it's probably not going to look like that. It's probably going to look like it's probably going to look like that. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, so you'll have to figure out how to set up uh, the dark theme if you are into dark themes, because some people are not. The second important tool that I use along with Emacs is so-called Haskell mode, which is extension for Emacs to work with Haskell. There is a pretty cool website called melpa.org. It's a third-party Emacs repo. I probably mentioned that uh, repo in my Emacs video, but the most important extension that I use every time I work with Haskell is Haskell mode. So it's this one. Let's take a look at it. It's actually pretty cool. Like, I really like it. Let's actually uh, take a quick look at how it works. Let's actually go somewhere here and create Haskell mod probe. And let's create the main.hs file there. So once you install Haskell mod, I'm not going to uh, go into details on how to install it into your current Emacs. There's documentation, there's Google, there's my separate Emacs video. But once you open it up, you can start typing some Haskell code. For example, you can define a function that it takes x and multiplies x by itself, a very classical example. What's cool about this mod is that it integrates with Haskell REPL. REPL is, stands for read, eval, print, loop. So what you have to do, you have to press Control c Control l and it's going to start Haskell REPL and load up that code into that REPL. And that function that I defined there is already available. Emacs and Haskell mod are two tools that I use on my every Haskell run episode. But what is the this uh, Haskell repo. It's JHCI, which is part of GHC uh, Haskell compiler. GHC Haskell. So again, on Linux, it's quite easy to install. It's usually available on most of the distros. Uh, how to install all of that on Windows or Mac OS, I have no idea. So three main tools that I use on Haskell run. Emacs, Haskell mod, and GHC. That's it. But apart from uh, doing Haskell Rank episodes, I also on my Twitch channel uh, every week, every Thursday, I suppose, at the moment, uh, this may change in the future, I develop a chatbot that is written completely in Haskell. It's called uh, Hypernerd. So this application is actually quite big and I would consider it a real world Haskell application. And this application requires a little bit of, of a different approach. I still use Emacs, I, use, I still use Haskell mode, I still use GHC, but on top of them I use a couple of extra tools to help me to develop that thing. The first extra tool I would say I use is Cabal. 
If you develop a Haskell application that has to deal with some kind of dependencies, you cannot just build with GHC all the time. By the way, if you're only starting with Haskell and you're trying to install Cabal or Stack, which is another build tool for Haskell, just stop. When you're only learning Haskell, use only GHC because you don't need Cabal or Stack to build a simple hello world. What you have to do, you have to just, uh, you know, write a hello world, right? And GHC has a built-in build tool, I suppose. You just do a dash dash make, uh, you provide your file and it builds the executable. It builds the hello world. You don't need any extra build tool to learn Haskell. You only need a cabal or stack when you're working with third-party dependencies. Don't try to go into those tools before you know the basics. Since Hypernerd is more or less complex application, I need to use a build tool that can work with dependencies. Let me, let me find the application. And this is how many dependencies uh, my bot has. I'm not really happy with it. So I think we can actually uh, remove some of them because the clean build of the bot takes a half of an hour. Downloading all of these dependencies takes a half of an hour. So what's cool about Cabal is that it's able to run Haskell repo with all of the dependencies available. As you can see, it starts JHCI, uh, just a regular JHCI, but on top of starting the regular JHCI, it compiles your application and imports all of the third-party dependencies so you can play with them in your REPL. For example, I'm pretty sure there, there are no Discord module in the standard library of Haskell, but since uh, I have a third-party dependency support, I can just import Discord library and write Discord-related stuff in Haskell. How cool is that? I think it's pretty cool. All right, uh, there is another interesting tool that I use all the time when I work with Haskell application. As a matter of fact, that tool was suggested to me by Twitch chat. That tool is called GHCID. The REPL for Haskell is GHCI, and this tool is GHCID. What it is, let's take a look at it. It's a very low feature GHCI based IDE. So what's interesting about that tool, you have to run it and provide command that it will use as a backend for its features. And it has to be GHCI REPL. Since we're using Cabal, we want to start the REPL in the Cabal way. So it's doing its thing. As you can see, it's doing its thing, nothing special. And it stops and it just says all good. What it's doing right now, it monitors all of the files in the project for any changes. And if you, if you change any of the files, it will automatically recompile everything. So let's take a look at how it works. So let's bring Emacs uh, and find one of the existing files, for example, bot, and uh, change something. Uh, and as you can see, uh, no, you cannot see by the way, because my camera actually uh, hides everything. It automatically recompiled everything and you know we have a compilation error and then I can uh, remove that and it compiles perfectly. It's very good for incremental development. So yeah, you just change something in the project and it automatically compiles and shows you where you made a mistake. And it's so good. It actually improves the development feedback loop. All right, this is one of the tools that I use in my real world Haskell applications. The second tool that I really like to use is called HLint. And you know what I noticed just now? It's developed by the same person, Nail Mitchell. I hope I pronounced their name correctly. So HLint is actually a linter, but it's a pretty good one. It's a linter that, you, that can teach you a proper Haskell. So do not hesitate to actually run that linter quite regularly on your Haskell projects. Because a lot of things that I learned recently, I learned from this tool. Uh, what it does, it uh, analyzes the patterns in your code and suggests better patterns. And those patterns are so good, like you can actually learn Haskell, a proper Haskell using that tool. I'm not even sure, we can try a simple example. Imagine that you have a function, func, and um, some kind of a monad, and usually functor. And you want to replace a value inside of that functor. You usually do that using fmap. Basically, you have a function uh, which ignores its own argument and replace it with something else. Uh, such lambda can be expressed like const 6. So basically, const constructs a function that ignores its argument and always returns 
pronounce this thing. So I think we don't even have to put parentheses here because of this um, operand. So this is how you would replace a value inside of a functor. So maybe int. Okay, so we have this thing and let's try to run an hlint on the project and see what it will suggest you. You see, instead of doing const 6 fmap, you can just use this operator, which basically the same. And by the way, before starting to use hlint, I didn't even know that this operator exists. hlint actually taught me something. So if you want to learn Haskell, don't read any books like uh, learn Haskell for good or whatever. Just use hlint. This entire tool will teach you the proper Haskell. And the third important tool that I use in my real-world Haskell application is HADent. Unfortunately, it was not developed by uh, Neil Mitchell, but okay. And it's just a Haskell prior printer. You can compare it to uh, Go FMT. So it's just basically for matter, but it's actually a pretty good one. It just formats your code to specific style. It's configurable. And on top of that, look at that folder. Look at that folder. A Lisp. It comes with the Emacs extension. How about that? I'm pretty sure it doesn't come with the Veeam extension. Huh? <laughs> Wait. So, for example, you have a very long expression that you just typed and you want to format it nicely, but you don't know how to do that. Uh, with the installed hident extension, as far as I know, it's, it's also available on Melpa as everything else. Uh, hident. Yes, it is available on Melpa, so you can use it from there. Uh, you just press uh, Alt-Q and it automatically formats everything. See, it says formatted. Isn't it nice? I think it's pretty nice. And it helps to manage long uh, Haskell expressions and you don't have to format them manually or anything like that. You just, you know, just type a long expression, hit Alt-Q and here you go. Um, so, I guess that's pretty much everything I use. As you can see, I don't use anything fancy for Haskell development. It's just Emacs and a bunch of additional tools, usually command line tools and, you know, extension wrappers for them. It's very basic, very minimalistic. So, I hope this helps. See you, see you in the next video. Which package manager do you prefer? Steam uh, from Valve. I think Steam is the best package manager.